Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Felicia Britton, Scholar Relations Coordinator with uh, GMS UNCF. And my name is Melissa Jordan, and I'm the new Senior Relationship Manager with uh, GMS UNCF. So we are glad you guys are joining us today for our phase two of the 2015 mm -hmm. uh, GMS Virtual Freshman Send-Off. So for today's send-off, um, we're going to do a little welcome, opening rem remarks, staff introductions. Um, the things, the key topics we're going we're gonna to talk about today is um, a brief overview of our previous virtual send-off, part one. Uh, some of you may have uh, been able to join in on that. Some of you may not have, so you'll get a brief overview, overview for all of you who didn't. Um, we're also going to talk about the top five success strategies for campus life. Um, we're going to discuss the leadership conference um, reminders and highlights. And we will then discuss the GMS ambassador program, strategies for outreach. Also, uh, we will have then a live Q&A at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So I'd like to go ahead and introduce um, everyone who's participating today um, within the um, GMS staff. So we have Melissa Jordan, Senior Relationship Manager for UNCF. Uh, we will also be joined by Evans Watson, Outreach Coordinator, also with UNCF. And then I, again, am Felicia Britton, Scholar Relations Coordinator, UNCF. We have also then Michael Bates, Academic Advisor for AIGCS, and Sarah Labarge, Academic Advisor AIGCS. So some things that we discussed in our last uh, virtual send-off were um, the, the college transition, transitioning from high school to college. Um, don't be afraid to ask for help and do it early. Um, so basically if you are dealing with any uh, academic challenges, you know, don't be afraid to seek help from tutors, professors, um, academic advisors on your campus. We also discussed the importance of pursuing your passions and strengths, following your bliss uh, in pursuit of your um, major of choice and your ultimate career goals. Um, then we had, as some one of our colleagues uh, touched on the importance of managing your scholarship funds responsibly. And then we wrapped up with um, the importance of um, fiscal responsibility, personal financial literacy 101. So now we're going to kick it over to Michael and Sarah. What's going on on your side of the country, guys? Hi, my name is Michael Bates. Uh, I'm, the, uh, I'm an academic advisor at the American Indian Graduate Center with the Gates Williams College Program. Hi, everyone. My name is Sarah Labarge. I'm also an academic advisor with the American Indian Graduate Center for the Gates Millennium Scholars Program. Uh, I'm excited to be here for the second portion of the freshman send-off. Um, I know some of you already started, so I hope you all are off to a great start. Uh, Michael and I are going to talk a little bit today about um, a few tips that might be good for you for your uh, first month at college. Okay, so we have um, the first important step we're going to discuss is locating resources on campus. Um, in the first month of campus life, it's really important to locate key individuals and resources that will help you um, succeed throughout your academic career. A few things that we recommend that you find on your campus include advising and career, career services, um, if you haven't already done so. These individuals can help you determine your major and help you set up a graduation plan, um, which will outline exactly what courses you'll need to um, to take along the way to obtain your degree. Um, also take the time to stop in the financial aid office and meet your financial aid officers and have them sit down with you and go over your cost of attendance as well as any grant scholarships or other aid um, that you might be receiving. Uh, it might also be helpful to find your multicultural center on campus um, and see how you can get involved there. Um, the Writing Center is also a valuable resource on campus that you should tap into. At the Writing Center, they can help you assist with writing your papers and formatting them correctly. Um, college is a lot different in many respects, and learning new styles of writing um, is key to your success. Along the same lines, you should also visit the Tutoring Center. Um, don't wait until your grades are in jeopardy um, to visit the Tutoring Center. You should be proactive and seek them out early. You might pick up helpful tips and new ways to study from those peer tutors. Um, they might also be helpful 
um, if they took a course with the same professor that you're going to be taking the course with. And finally, um, we recommend that you seek out your health center. So life on campus can be fun, um, but living in, in in close quarters with others means you might have a higher chance of being exposed to illnesses. Um, so know where you can seek medical help on or off campus based on your insurance. Um, number two, consider time management. Understanding time management is imperative to your new lifestyle. Proper time management is going to help you be successful in both college and life. Uh, a few tips that we recommend would be creating a set schedule for yourself. Um, if you're a visual learner, feel free to map it out on a weekly basis. Um, know how you're going to be spending your time in advance. That's going to help you prepare as best as you can for completing your coursework on time. Another tip is to use a daily planner. So put notes in there um, and plan out when you're going to complete your assignments. And last but not least, don't procrastinate. Um, waiting until the last minute to complete your task is setting yourself up for more stress. If you do things earlier, you have time to chip away at them instead of rushing at the last minute or, or trying to cram the night before a test. Um, the third success strategy that we wanted to talk about today um, is mastering your study skills. It's important to find what's right and what works for you. Explore different environments to study in on campus and determine what type of environment you prefer. Some students prefer it to be quiet while others prefer it to be very busy and loud. Taking good notes from your lectures is very vital to your study habits as well. Use things like mnemonic devices and color schemes or highlighters on your notes to help you remember things. Um, in order to take good notes, of course, you need to go to class. College is an exciting place to explore, but stay focused on why you are there to begin with. If you find yourself missing classes to fulfill other campus obligations, you, you may need to reevaluate. Um, coursework should always come first. Um, if you can, find a study group on campus. This will help you meet others, but will also um, help you bounce around ideas uh, from the campus lecture, I mean the course lecture, excuse me. And finally, don't be afraid to go to office hours or um, tutoring. These individuals are there to help you, especially if you don't understand um, something from the lecture. Uh, next, I will turn it over to Michael, who is going to talk a little bit about networking and getting involved on campus. OK, I'll move on to step four, um, the strategy number four, networking. College is the time to start forming a network that will never stop growing. Form relationships with friends, peers, classmates, fellow Gates scholars, professors, the GMS staff, and others. You never know when this could come, become beneficial to you in the future. Professors could write letters of recommendation for graduate school or for potential employers. People in your network may know about pers prospective job opportunities or possible avenues to receive graduate funding if you plan to pursue something outside of the seven GMS funded areas. Communicating with and forming your relationships with your professors is an integral part of your college experience. Like I mentioned, they're able to write recommendation letters for graduate school or job applications. And it's even possible that you have the same professor for courses in which you enroll in in the future, especially when you start taking your major courses. So getting to know them the first time around could help you out in the long run. Professors want to engage you in the classroom and hear from you. Read your syllabus for each class. Professors usually list their office hours in the syllabus. Set up a meeting to discuss things one-on-one -on -one with your professors should you have any questions or concerns about course material and try to be engaged in a classroom or lecture hall. Sit towards the front and don't be shy when professors ask questions. This may give you the upper hand when visiting professors during office hours if they recognize you from the classroom or lecture hall. So start building your network freshman year and continue to expand your network as you progress through your collegiate and professional career. You never know when someone in your network will be able to help you out. And then success, success strategy number five, um, get involved on campus. Um, there are plenty of opportunities available for you to get involved on campus. Most schools have a first year experience office or something of the sort. If you don't know where it's located, ask around. Search on the school website or talk to your RA and try to locate yours to make, and make the time to visit it to see what's available out there. Universities also typically hold student involvement fairs throughout the year. Try to attend these if at all possible. They're another great way to see what's out there and find out about all the student organizations and clubs on your college campus. 
Um, one more thing is intramural sports. They're, uh, they're a great way to take a break from your studies and uh, get involved with and uh, meet people. So be sure to read the flyers you see around campus and check your school email daily for opportunities to get involved on campus. And with that, I'll pass it back to Melissa. All right. Thanks, Michael and Sarah. All right. So next up, we're going to talk about da -da -da -da, the Leadership Conference. Yay! <laughs> Leadership Conference 2015. So as most of you know, particularly if you're going to go to Virginia, you've probably already um, registered. And so the conference in Virginia is going to be in Chantilly. And this is going to be September the 25th through the 27th. And the conference on the West Coast is going to be in Santa Clara, California, on November the 6th through the 8th. So for the folks out on the West Coast, if you're going to the West Coast Conference, make sure you register, 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 because we want to see you there. So here are some travel reminders for the 2015 Leadership Conference. If you're coming by air, then you want to make sure that you have a government photo ID. Um, so just make note that your school ID, ID excuse me, is a no-no. You, you will not be able to get on a plane if you only have your school ID. You need a government-issued ID. The name on your ID must match the e-ticket name that's listed. Um, you'll get one checked bag, a maximum of 50 pounds, and one carry-on. Um, and then you need to arrive at the airport at least two hours before your flight. Now, I want to take, make a special note about that two hours before your flight. You will be surprised. People think, oh, it's fine. I'll give myself an hour or 45 minutes. And then you get to the airport, and what happens? You have to stand in the security line for an hour, and then you end up missing your flight. What you don't want to do is miss your flight. So make sure you provide ample amount of time to get to the airport so that you can get checked in, gone through security, cleared security, and be sitting at your gate. Make sure you give yourself enough time because that's the last thing you want is the hassle of having to try to rebook and contact the travel agency and such and such. But when you register, we're going to ask you for some uh, travel information. And our official travel agent is AIT, which is Alpha International Travel. Um, and they're going to decide whether it's best for you to come by air or come by train. Um, and if you come by air or train, there will be um, a shuttle there that's going to pick you up. And that's going to be more than likely BBC Express, which is our official ground travel transportation. Um, so just keep that in mind. If you're a scholar that's at a local university, so for example, for the Virginia Conference, if you're a scholar that's going to, to uh, university in D.C. or Virginia, then you're going to be able to catch a shuttle bus. And we're going to do more information about that. Likewise, on the West Coast, if you're at a local university, you also will have the opportunity to catch a shuttle bus. Um, and if you want to drive to the conference, that may be an option, but you will need to get permission to do that. So just keep that in mind. So the other thing is room assignments. So you will be paired with another GMS um, scholar at the conference. And it is, uh, you don't it's not like when you were in school, when you signed up for school and you got to choose your roommate. We do pair folks and we are pretty intentional. We want you to make life lasting friendships with um, other GMS scholars. So it's really important that you just be open and um, know that you, you will share a room with someone for a couple of days. Uh, the leadership conference is only for gay scholars. So I know sometimes in the past families get excited, they want to share the experience, but this is just for GMS scholars. So no friends, no family, it's just going to be us this particular weekend. Um, and so remember that we're putting you together as an opportunity to network and build relationships and meet new people. Um, the, this is the beginning of your networking experience. It's going to be at this conference where you meet scholars from all over the nation. So just be open. Conference expectations. So this is pretty simple. You want to make sure that you are carrying yourself in an appropriate manner. Um, and understanding that your attendance is very important. You need to be present. And that just doesn't mean physically present, but also mentally engaged and participatory. And like I said before, you do need to remain on site. People cannot, people who are not gate scholars cannot attend. And also, you won't really be able to leave. So in your hotel rooms, make sure that you keep the noise levels down. We want to be respectful of the folks around us. And you will have to be in your room by 1 AM. Um, and remember, this is going to be a good time. Rules are important. Expectations are important to kind of set the, set the tone, but we do want you guys to enjoy yourselves. Okay, so benefits and highlights for 2015 Leadership Conference. Um, you're going to meet a ton of people, and so it's important that you be ready to get to know a ton of staff and fellow scholars and some alums. Um, you'll also learn about the benefits of your scholarship and how you can take advantage of those benefits. You'll he hear from some world-renowned speakers, and you'll learn more about our leadership development program. Most importantly, 
we will talk to you about how to be successful on campus. That's our number one objective. We want you to get on campus, get acclimated, be very successful, and matriculate to graduation. At the end of the day, this is about your development, and we want to make sure that you get everything that you can out of this conference. So for the, second, for the next part of the presentation, I'm going to kick it back to Michael and Sarah so they can tell you a little bit about um, some past speakers that we've had for the conference. Okay, so <clears throat> looking at the past conference highlights, the, uh, the keynote speakers are carefully chosen each year, and hearing what these influential people have to say is a great experience and opportunity. So we're going to look at a few of them that we've, uh, that we've had in the past. Um, in 2014, we had Rosa Rios. She was the 43rd treasurer of the United States. And in 2011, we had Malcolm Jamal Warner, and he's an Emmy-nominated actor and director. In 2014, we had uh, Sefa Aina, and he's the Associate Dean and Director of the Asian American Resource Center at Pomona College. And he's probably my favorite speaker that we've had so far at any of the conferences. Um, in 2013, we had Sylvia Mendez, and she's a civil rights activist. In 2013, we also had Tatiana Ali. She's an actress, singer, producer, and activist. And in 2013, we had Richard Louie, and he's an American journalist and news anchor. And uh, I just wanted to add in that my freshman, uh, I'm a Gates Millennium Scholar, and my freshman GMS Leadership Conference is one of my most memorable experiences as a Gates Millennium Scholar. And I still talk to some of the GMS scholars I met there my freshman year and still include them in my network. Uh, this is something I look forward to each year, and I'm excited to meet all of you all very soon. And on that note, I yield my time to Evans. Hello, everybody. My name is Evans Watson. I'm the Outreach Coordinator for the GMS program. And I would like to talk to you a little bit about your opportunity to give back to the program. Uh, we, we have what we call the GMS Ambassador Program for all scholars that are interested in, in out, doing outreach for the program and getting other people who are qualified and interested in, in getting scholarships to join the GMS family. Uh, how many scholars want to tell people in the community about the GMS experience by a show of hands? No, I can't see your hands, but you understand. Uh, we want people to go out and tell how it feels to be a Gates scholar, what, how it feels to have your entire tuition paid for with the exception of your family contribution. Um, we want that experience. We want people to go out into the community and, and talk about that. If you'd like to give back to your community and share the GMS experience and join our team and become a GMS ambassador, we have a great way of doing that. We have our own website and our own GMS ambassador community. The way to go about that is uh, you can go to you can go to www.gmsambassador.org. Um, sign up there, and you'll you'll see a lot of information about what ambassadors do, um, what we ask from our ambassadors, and how they should conduct themselves when they go out on outreach opportunities. Uh, one of the things we can do is host a GMS application workshop. And a workshop is nothing but uh, you talking to scholars on how to complete their GMS applications. How do you complete your essays? Um, how many words should your essay be? Um, what should be the content of those essays? And how do you go about finding and identifying a recommender and a nominator? Um, the other thing that we, can, we ask GMS ambassadors to do is to go out to outreach events. Um, we have outreach events all over the country. And some of these events we can't get to. They're in remote areas. Uh, we can't be all over the country at once. We have a very small team, unfortunately. But well, you can go back to your own high school or your community and go back and talk about the GMS experience. And we can send you materials to uh, improve your outreach abilities and also uh, give you training on how to give the GMS PowerPoint. Um, also, you can make a GMS presentation. And that ties in with the GMS PowerPoint. We can train you on how to use that PowerPoint and talk about to not only parents but also students about how do you sign up and, and apply for the GMS, uh, GMS scholarship. Uh, the fifth part is the tweet and Facebook post about the application and GMS outreach events. So sometimes you can't be there, we can't be there, but there's outreach events taking place all over the country um, with different different agencies talking about the GMS program and scholarships. So you can tweet those opportunities and Facebook those opportunities out to the public and, and kind of get the uh, interest drummed up for those events. All right? And last but not least, um, I just want to know, do you want to become a GMS ambassador? Because if you do, we have a lot of great gifts and, and, and outreach opportunities and events for you to give back to. All right? And the best way to get to become a GMS ambassador is go on to www.gmsambassador.org and sign up. 
So uh, I'm looking forward to having all of you in incoming scholars sign up at www.gmsambassador.org and join the GMS Ambassador family. And we can, in with you guys on board, we can improve and enlarge the footprint of the GMS program to include all communities. Um, we're also asking uh, all incoming scholars to tweet the following every Friday at 12 p.m. and 3 p.m. Hashtag apply to GMS and hashtag 20K strong. Um, we want all scholars to kind of get the word out to uh, other students who may be qualified and interested in applying for the scholarship to uh, apply. We want to get the word out to, to have more applications so we can have more qualified scholars join our program. Um, tweet that information out, Facebook that information out, get the word out to all the folks in your community about it, uh, and let them know that this is a great program to be a part of. And if you have any questions, you can go and ask the following people. You can ask uh, Stacy Lewis at the API ASF office. You can ask Michael Bates and Sarah Lamarge. You can ask, uh, well, they're with the AIGCS office. You can ask Paulette Palafox with the HSF office. And you can ask me, Evans Watson, if you are uh, part of the UNCF office. So if you have any questions, make sure you uh, ask them when we have our question and answer period. And most importantly, sign up and become a GMS ambassador. Go to www.gmsambassador.org. All right? Thank you very much for your time. Have a great day. This is me signing off. Okay, that was awesome. So we told you a lot of information. We've given you a recap of the first virtual send-off. Um, we're excited about the conference. And so we hope that you all will join us for a live question and answer with a wonderful panel of professionals that are here to answer your questions. So by this time, it should be 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, and we want you to catch us on the YouTube channel connected to Gates Millennium Scholars so that we can answer your questions. Uh, hopefully, we'll see you guys there. Thanks again. Have a great day. Bye. Bye. Bye.